so good to see all of you here. Welcome to our second Camp TV virtual workshop. We have some really fun things planned, but before we get started, I just wanted to point out some of the materials we're going to be using today. A clear container filled partway with water and some objects to put in the container to see if they're gonna float because we're gonna play the will it float game later today. So like a plastic spoon, a metal spoon, a paper clip, a coin, and some other small objects. And if you don't have them, that's okay too. You can just watch along. But um, we have our friends from Liberty Science Center here today and our human and non-human friends from the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. And to get started, I would like to introduce our co-counselor from Camp TV, Mia, who is going to be our host of the show today. So can you guys join me in giving a big warm welcome to Mia? Oh, thank you. No need to applaud. You're too kind. Thank you so much. Hi, Janice. Hi, Mia. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited for today. I hear you have some fun activities planned. I do. We're going to learn some really cool animal facts. We're going to uh, do a cool pepper experiment, and we're going to play the will it float game. Awesome. Yeah. Are you ready? Let's get started, everyone. First, I'd like to bring up Marco from the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. Get on up here, Marco. Hey, Marco. Hi, guys. Hi. I'm so excited to be here today with all of you. We're so excited to have you. I hear you have someone you'd like us to meet. Oh, I really, really do. A really special animal found in the rainforest of South America. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen that animal before. How do you say it, it, its name? What's it called? I know, it's a, it's a funny name. They're sometimes called a lesser anteater, but the fun way to say it is tamandua. And this is an animal that climbs about in the rainforest. Wow, look at that tail, it's so long. Oh, I know, it's such a great adaptation. And that's a really fun word. It's really another way to say a tool. It's an adaptation or a tool that the tamandua uses to climb around in the treetops. Wow, so cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. Is there any way that we could maybe see a real live tamandua? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. I have someone very special for all of you friends to meet out there. Do you want to see him? Absolutely. All right, guys. All right, let's go. Look who's behind me right now. This is Fernando. Now, Fernando is called a tamandua or a lesser anteater and as the name suggests i bet you know what he specializes in check this out everyone in one second now they're going to use their sense of smell his vision is not that great but his sense of smell is amazing <gasps> wow look at that look how long that tongue is everyone that is 16 inches long an amazing adaptation to eat all the termites and ants that they would normally be eating out in the wild. Now the tamandua here, he can be found as far north as Mexico and as far south as South America in Brazil, those beautiful rainforests out there. And you can see how much he loves those bugs. Now he doesn't have teeth like we do and his mouth is actually about just as wide as a pencil. Isn't that crazy? But that's a wonderful adaptation for eating all those ants out there in the wild. And not only that, Look at those claws. Those are super strong claws that help Fernando here climb about in the rainforest habitats. He's what we call arboreal, which really just means spends a lot of times up in those treetops. Let's give him a few more little yummies while we're talking about him, because it's not only that amazing tongue adaptation and the claws, I want to point out his color. Now they can do a different variation of black and brown and white, but this is super coarse fur. So if he is on top of an ant mound, as an example, this fur will help protect Fernando from getting bit from one of those ants out there. But my favorite adaptation is that tail. That is called the prehensile tail. It's almost like another arm that helps Fernando and other tamanduas climb about in the rainforest habitat. Now again, this particular mammal you can find in Central and in South America, and he represents all the vibrant diversity that you can find in those rainforest habitats. Wow, that was so cool. Thank you so much. Did you oh, say that its tongue is 16 inches long? Yes, 16 inches long. What a phenomenal adaptation. And you know what, everyone? I brought something really special. It's a ruler because this is going to help me help you know how long is 16 inches. So let's figure this out. So how long is a tamandua tongue, everyone? Let's see here. Is it is it this long? No, not this long. Is it this long? No. Yeah, you're right. Not this long. 
16 inches is all the way right there. Look at that. That is wow. a 16 inch long Tamandua tongue. That's a really long tongue, but that's one of many adaptations. Like if you all remember the coarse fur, and that's just another way to say really thick fur. So the thick fur, the long tongue adaptation, perfect for eating all those yummy bugs out there. So cool. Thank you so much. Now, <laughs> I heard that you also know a lot about birds and you really like birds. Oh, birds are my favorite animals on planet Earth. I'm so glad you asked. Yeah, you know, I, I wish we could see a bird. Oh, uh, you know, I really wish we had a bird out here that I could share with all of you because they are amazing. So many different colors and adaptations, just like the Tamandua that all of you learned today. Um, there might just mm -hmm. be something very exciting behind you, actually. Behind me? Really? Yeah, yeah just <gasps> get around. Look, everybody, this is lightning. Oh, wow, we are so lucky. Lightning, he's called the hyacinth macaw. Now, macaws are a group of parrots. So we have all different sorts of parrots on our planet. Parrots here, or macaws, I should say, are the biggest of all the parrots. And the hyacinth macaw here, he is the biggest parrot on planet Earth. And he has so many cool adaptations. For one, look at those beautiful feathers. Parrots communicate in color. So much diversity in color, but also those feet. Look at those feet right now as he's showing you those beautiful toes. Oh, whoa, look at that. Thank you, Lightning. Now, like the Tamandua, the long claws that Tamandua had to climb about, he doesn't have that, but he has, you notice, one two toes in the front and he has two toes in the back it's called the perching foot and that's going to help lightning climb around in those rainforests wow lightning is beautiful now we have a question going back really quick to oh, okay to the to mandua uh someone from the audience wants to know how does it store a tongue that long in its mouth Oh, that's a really good question. Now they have a lot of space inside of the mouth, but I'm sure all of you remember because you're so good listeners that the wide, the mouth part here is not very wide at all. It's about the width of a pencil, but he has enough inside of his mouth to hold that really, really long tongue. And it's probably a good idea. Otherwise that tongue would probably be hanging out the whole time. And that'd be kind of <laughs> silly, I think. That'd be very <laughs> silly. Wow, I'm so fascinated by lightning. I, I have a question about lightning. Uh, does lightning talk? Ooh, that's a great question. I love talking about that because everyone thinks parrots talk, right? Like you and I are talking, but it's not necessarily true. They do what's called mimicking or they're copying sounds. Do you guys out there ever pretend you're uh, maybe a dinosaur? You do? <laughs> Me too. And sometimes I'll even pretend to make dinosaur sounds. That's kind of what they do. They pretend to make sounds that they learn. So sometimes a bird like Lightning here can learn how to make a sound of a monkey, or maybe he could bark like a dog. Sometimes it can even copy human sounds. So they're not really talking, they're more mimicking sounds out there. That was an awesome question. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've learned so much. Thank you, all of you, animals included. This has been so fun. I wish we could stay and learn about even more animals, but I think it's time to move on to some science experiments. I'd all like right, to bring Alejandro great. from the Liberty Science Center up on stage. Hello, Mia. Hello, young scientists out there. Hello. We're so happy to have you. How are you doing? I am so excited for some awesome science that we're going to be doing today. Me too. I heard you have a, a pepper experiment. I do. Thank you for mentioning Mia. So here at the Liberty Science Center, we like to do our demonstrations pretty supersized. So what you're going to see is I got a big container of water. And what I'm going to do in this big container of water is that I got some pepper. I'm going to open up this container. I'm just going to pour a whole bunch of pepper. And you notice that I tend to be a little messy and that's okay because science tends to be messy. So here we have a whole bunch of pepper now. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my finger onto this layer of water with pepper. So my question to you before I do that experiment, what do you think is going to happen to my finger if I dip it right into that layer? What do we think? Mm, let's see if we got some young scientists pondering. What about you, Mia? Do you have an idea of what might happen? 
Hmm. Well, I think that maybe you'll get some pepper on your finger. Oh, all right. So let us find out. So I'm going to use my pointer finger and I'm just going to dip it. And as I lift up, wow, look at all of that pepper. Look at all that. It's practically covering all of my index finger. So here's what we're going to do next then. What we're going to do is I have a small beaker full of dish soap. So this is the type of soap that you use to wash your dishes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my other finger, since it's the cleaner one, and I'm going to dip that finger into my soap and then dip it into the water filled with pepper. So young scientist, what do you think is going to happen when I do it that way? Ooh. Mm, well, someone guesses that it's going to separate, but I don't know. I think you'll just get even more pepper on your finger. Interesting. All right, let's find out. Let us find out what our result is. So I'm going to place my finger full of soap and place it right in the center. Whoa. Whoa. So young scientist that mentioned it will separate. You are absolutely correct. So let's see if I can try it once more because I got a whole bunch of pepper on this side. Uh, there we go. So you can see that even in the slightest, it starts to separate. So with our pepper and soap experiment, what we just demonstrated is the importance of hand washing. All right, what we see here is that our pepper acts as those germs, all right, germs, are very sticky. And what they love to do is just to stick on to things and make us feel sick. So what our soap does when we wash with it is that it practically unglues them off to our fingers. And so it is very, very important to always wash your hands with special soap to unglue all of those germs. Wow. Thank you so much. Now I re finally really understand the importance of hand washing. I mean, I've always done it, but I didn't get the science behind it, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Now I heard that uh, you have a game for us to play. I do. So this game is called Will It Float? So what I have here is a whole bunch of different materials. So as you heard in the very beginning, we have asked you to gather some materials with a container of water. And Nia, I think you also have some materials as well, correct? I do, I have some of the same materials as you. All right, awesome. So for our scientists out there that may not have the materials and the container of water, we still rely on your observation skills as scientists to give us your predictions on this experiment. And just like I said, we like to supersize things at the Liberty Science Center. So what I'm going to do is tell you some of the materials I got. So I actually have a wooden ball, a metal ball, a metal and plastic spoon. I got a small square of aluminum foil, some pennies, and some paper clips. So Mia, I think it was a good idea to have the, give you the honor of choosing what materials I should use for this game. Ooh, thank you so much. Um, well, I see a lot of our young scientists have their materials as well, which is very exciting. I think, could we start with a paper clip and aluminum foil? Ooh, paper clip and aluminum foil. So I'm gonna take a guess that you want the metal paper clip. Is that right, Nia? That's a really good guess, yeah. All right, awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set aside some of those materials and I'm going to bring my big basin of water. And I see Mia's got her basin of water too. Ready to go. I'm sure some of our young scientists have the same. So you notice that Mia and I have different size containers and that is okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper clip first since that's what Mia chose. And we're going to find out Will it float? But before I do that, any predictions of what would happen if I dump that paper clip inside my container of water? Will it float or will it sink? Oh, I see some thumbs down. So I'm gonna take that as it's gonna sink. 
Any other guesses? What do you think, Mia? I, I trust these young scientists. So if they say it's going to sink, I think it's going to sink. All right. So let us find out. So here we go. And Mia, I see you got a paper clip too. So on the count of three, we're going to do it. One, two, three. Oh. It looks Oops, like mine sunk it, way down to the bottom. Yeah, it kind of sank. It sank. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, let's let's try one more uh, choice. Oh, there we go. We got our sinking sound there. <laughs> All right. We got our aluminum foil. So let's try it out. So for our scientists out there, and I know Mia is relying on your expertise, what do you think? Will it sink or will it float? Oh, mm -hmm. I see some thumbs ups. I see some answers. What do you think, Mia? Again, I, I have to trust these scientists and I'm seeing a lot of guesses for float. So I'm going with float. Oh, excellent, excellent. Here we go on the count of three. One, two, three. What? It floats. It floats. Man, these scientists are smart. Absolutely. So. Let's talk a little bit more about our experiment here. So the best way to do it is I kind of like the way it floats, but I'm gonna do something even better. I'm actually gonna crush that aluminum foil and turn it into a bowl. So what I have here is actually just to make sure as a scientist, we like to repeat our experiment. So I make sure that I have two aluminum foil balls in my hand. All right. So for our young scientists here, what do you think is going to happen? Will these aluminum foil balls float or will it sink? Mm, this feels like a trick question. What does everyone think? I don't know. I could see it going either way, but yeah. I'm going to guess sink. Okay. Let us find out. So here's experiment number one. I'm gonna show you my container and here we go. On the count of three. One, two, three. <gasps> it it floats. Hmm. Okay, let's do it one more time then. I got my second aluminum foil ball. All right, I know some of you don't have it, but let's check out this experiment here. Let's try out this aluminum foil ball. Here we go. One, two, three. Wait, what is going on here? That's sick. What is going on? My young scientist, do we have any guesses as to what could have possibly happened with that second aluminum foil ball? What do we think? What do we think? Send it in the chat. What's I'm going stumped. on here? This is a very good example of what I'm going to talk about in just a few seconds. But let's see some predictions. Why I only one had go? one little one in it and it floated. But let's see. Someone says it's heavy. It was flat. Those are really good guesses. Those bigger are some and good more guesses. force. Absolutely. So, oh, bigger and more force. I like that. So mm -hmm. what we have here is a very good example of density. So density, all that means is um, it's how compact a material is. So everyone was completely correct when they said that aluminum foil will float because it's considered less dense. And if I were to open this aluminum foil ball, the first one I threw in, it's actually filled with nothing but empty air, all right? So because it's not really compact, you know, we kind of crush it all together, but it still has some air that kind of helps it float. If I were to open the other one, and someone mentioned more heavy, so that young scientist pat yourself on the back because I played a trick on you. <gasps> what I ended up with is... <laughs> I had a metal ball inside what? my aluminum foil ball. So there you go. So as you can tell, a he very heavy metal ball 
is ob obviously going to sink because it is considered more dense because it's got more material compacted in to this ball. Wow. Foiled so again. Oh, go ahead, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I was just saying we've been foiled again. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like Thank it. you I so it. much. This is, this, this is why I'm here. Uh, OK. Thank you so much. We've learned so much. This has been amazing. I'd like to bring Marco back up. And thank you so much to Marco, Alejandro, and of course, Fernando and Lightning. This has been so fun. Everyone, we're going to put a survey in the chat. We would love for you to fill it out so you, we can hear about your experience. And make sure to watch me on Camp TV uh, on your local PBS and also on CampTV.org. Thank you so much for coming, everyone.